everyone. Hello and welcome everyone. We'll be starting in just a moment. Hello, Russell. Good to see you back again. <laughs> and Aero Snapper, yes, we'll be talking, um, not today, but we'll be talking about the um, avionics images that I've been taking. Hello, Mary Han. All right, now look, Brenda, I'll look at this real close and see what the beginning half of the message was. Well, hello and welcome everyone to another Luminar Coffee Break where you ask the questions and Skylum supplies the experts to answer those questions. I'm your host, Vanelli. Now, in this session, what I want to do is take you on a little trip um, on, a, on a photo shoot we just did yesterday. I know and I do respect the... Um, the, the coronavirus, I do, do expect, respect all the things that we're dealing with right now. But my little girl, Erica, I'll show you a picture of her. Here's little Erica. I've been photographing her since she was five years old. Here she is, about to turn 18, and is graduating high school. Well, as you know, they're not doing a lot of, they're, they're not doing a lot of graduation stuff for the kids. So they're doing virtual graduations, and I feel really bad for her. So <clears throat> we went to a grave site, her grandmother, who just recently passed away, and we just did a real quick photo shoot at the site. We're talking maybe 10, 15 minutes. Nobody was around. We kept our distance. We kept the precaution. There are a few funny photo shoots we want to do, but out of respect for the quarantine, we decided we're going to hold off on those. So... With that being said, what I want to do is show you how I captured this shot and how we can edit it using Luminar, all right? So a couple things. First, let's see. Here's the original image. Let me get to it. Well, here's the, here's the, the image we, we're going with. Here is the image if we didn't use this, um, if we didn't use this technique that I'm about to show you. So if we didn't use this clamshell lighting technique, that's what the image would look like. Look how harsh the shadows are over here, and the light is just uneven all over the place. <laughs> yeah, yes, Rick, I, I look at her as a daughter, unfortunately. <laughs> um, all right, so with that being said, we did do a real quick video. So I'm gonna show you a video of how we captured this, and you'll understand about the clamshell lighting. The top one is what's called a diffuser. It's letting the light come through and it's taking one stop of the diffusion of the light and making it even all the way across her. The bottom is a reflector and all that's doing is bouncing the light back up. So here's the light coming down, boom, and it's bouncing right back up and getting rid of any of the shadows underneath and any of the raccoon eyes or the shadows under the eyes, all right? So here's the video. And notice, underneath, her mother is holding the reflector underneath. Her sister Alyssa is holding the reflector up on top, or the diffuser on top. Now watch. <clears throat> when she removes the diffuser, look how harsh the light is. Now, when Lisa removed the reflector, look how the bottom just looked horrible. You know, <coughs> excuse me. Mm. I switched from coffee to tea. Um, so it, did, you, did you see how that looked? So by switching it the way we did, this is what we ended up coming up with. The, the shadows underneath are, are bad, and of course the, the, um, the light on her is horrible. So this isn't an image you want to just take into Luminar and say, hey, Luminar, work your magic with it. It could do, it could make it look a lot better, but that's not the purpose. Do you remember? I mentioned before, are you a photographer? 
a graphic artist or a um, uh, retoucher. You can be all three, but whatever you are, be that person in that moment. And in this moment, we were photographers. We captured, pull the image back. There we go. So we captured this image out of the camera. All right? So let's have fun with this image. First and always, like I like to do, is I like to start with AI Image Enhancer. And again, what that's going to do for me is it's just going to improve the image overall. Here's before, here's after. The, the blue sky is a little too bright for me, and that's okay. So let me come up here and dial down the light, or dial down the, the sky just a touch. Now, if it's a color issue, which it is up here, I'm going to click on the color tool and determine, is it saturation or vibrancy? Well, saturation is going to enhance all the colors equally. So let me dial that back a little bit. I'm going to mute all the colors evenly. Now, vibrancy, I want to um, make the, the colors that are, that are the muted colors, <clears throat> uh, I want to make them more vibrant. So saturation is going to make all the colors look a little um, saturated or undersaturated. Vibrancy is only dealing with the muted colors. And then I can remove some of the color cast, which I don't really notice any here, so we're fine. Now, if I want, I can pinpoint, you know, these reds and the blues, let's say her blue, you know, and we could make it darker or brighter, just the blues. I like it the way it is, so I'm going to leave it alone. So, <clears throat> the social distancing apply here. <laughs> it's good. We, we talked about this earlier. And yes, this is one of those exceptions to where they were going to, I'm, I'm glad you brought it because I knew this was going to be a hot topic. They were going to the grandmother's grave site, and that's their, where they go out, they, they rake everything up, they clean it up, that's part of their exercise and part of mourning for her, her grandmother. So we figured I'm going to tag along with them, spend 10 to 15 minutes, snap a couple quick shots, wait in the car for them, we did. Went back home, got ice cream like we normally do, and boom, um, brought the images in. So, like I said, I knew I was going to get some of these questions on that. All right, so here we are again. I like where we're heading. And now we're going to come over to the uh, portrait tools. First thing I want to do is I'm going to look at uh, Erica here. And actually, let's zoom in just a little bit. One thing I didn't do, which... I got thrown off a little bit. Is so I'm gonna come up here to light. So for the light tool, because this was a, a, a raw file, I could choose what white balance I want. I typically like to click the eyedropper tool and then just click anywhere within the white. And that gives me a good, decent starting point for my white balance. And actually, I like it right there. Here's before and after. All right, now let's go back to the portrait tools. Uh, we'll zoom in up 100% and dial back just a touch. There we go. Good. I'm going to enhance your skin, not to the point where it looks fake. And for the portrait tools. Now, what you should ask is without using lights, so we did use the reflector and we did use the um, diffuser. What about catch lights? Well, if you notice, we still have the catch lights because catch lights are just that. They're lights, they're lights being thrown into the eyes. And in this case, you could see the diffuser and the reflector. Let's see what happens when we enhance the eyes more. Ooh, look at that. See how I brought that out? There's not too much dark circles under her eyes, so we're fine. And her eyebrows are always good, but if I want to make them just a little thicker, I can. Now, the only thing we didn't do was bring a makeup artist. So, oh, 
You know what? My screen froze. One moment. I'm so sorry. Let me... Here, let me re reactivate my NDI. <clears throat> Here we go again. There we go. I apologize for that. So, then, so my, my NDI filter actually um, in Windows canceled out on me. So here's the eyes. This is what I zoomed in on. The catch lights are here. So even though we don't have the catch lights from a traditional <clears throat> um, softbox, we still have it because of the reflector. So by turning on and off the portrait enhancer, I'm going to come down and enhance the eyes even further. Look at that. Look how it's really bringing out that catch light. There's no, it's not really any dark circles under the eyes because we bounced light back underneath. And notice it's more flat light now on her face. What we don't have or didn't have is a makeup artist. So I do want this, the lips just to be a little redder, not to the point to where they're fake, but just enough to add a little more color to it. And I mentioned earlier, Erica already has beautiful eyebrows. I could improve them just a little bit <clears throat> by making them a little fuller. Her teeth already look white, so I don't need to mess with them. And there we have it. So before and after. Um, and then we'll come back. And I think it's, it's dying for just a little vignette, nothing major. Good. And last but not least, <clears throat> I want to take it to the top layers. And here's all the adjustments turned off. And I want to bring the adjustments to 50 to 75% or 70%. For this, I'm going to stay at around 75. And there we have it. Before and after. Now, you <clears throat> could be asking, well, do you want to replace the sky? I could, but for this image, the sky doesn't need it. It looks fine just the way it is. All right? So there you have it. That's how we used a simple <clears throat> two, a two, uh, two lighting setup. You have the, ref the reflector, the, the reflector underneath, diffuser on top, and the light came through, made sure it came across Erica, evened it all out, made it look beautiful, and then the reflector bounced the light back up into her face. And now all we're doing is using Luminar to enhance the image overall. All right? Now, there was a question I asked earlier before the show. One moment. Let me make sure I have it for you. question, and I'm not sure if it showed up in the, the chat box when we first started, but the question is, um, here we go, do you normally shoot on your own or with a group, all right, do you normally shoot alone or with a group? That's the question. Um, so that's the question I want to ask everyone. And, and put the answers in there. Now, personally, I shoot with a whole group of people. So when I go on set, yeah, I do have a whole entourage of friends to come with me. You have a hair and makeup artist. I have a person working the lighting gear. I have an assistant who takes care of all the camera stuff. <clears throat> and the purpose of this from an edu educational standpoint is I bring these interns in to teach them while we're shooting. And then of course, their job is to help me turn the shoot itself. So I'm fortunate to have that ability. Uh, and then what I do is a lot of the interns, I pair them up with each other when they go out on, on shoots. And one acts like the lead photographer and the other one is strictly the assistant. The mouth stays closed until the person says, 
hey, I'm stumped. What suggestions do you have here? And in doing that, it teaches you to sift behind the scenes and watch and say, oh, if I were in charge, I would do this, this, and this. So the next time you're out there shooting, you'd look back and say, oh, wow, I remember. I was in the same position like this. Here's what I could do to solve these problems. Um, Russell, you have no excuse not to shoot alone because you live near us and you're always welcome to join in on anything we do. Most people shoot alone. Okay, so here's the other question then. What are you photographing? So I noticed if you're photographing portraits, <coughs> it's better to have, excuse me. It's better to have more people on the set with you. If you're shooting landscapes or if you're photographing um, product stuff, obviously you don't need a whole lot of people on set for that. We have a lot of people coming in. Let's see. Shoot alone, not professional, required. <laughs> Edward, Edward, Edward. <laughs> you don't need a whole entourage to be a professional or not. The whole entourage thing is good for bonding because you may learn something um, that somebody else is doing and you incorporate that into what you're doing you like, oh, wow, here's a real good example. Um, a good friend of mine named uh, Kurt Staples uh, in the martial arts days. We had the number one and number two school in the country, especially for competition. We were in Syracuse, New York. He was in Rome, New York. He was about 30 minutes away. We, I, I felt bad for him. His instructor, karate instructor, passed away, got struck by lightning, freak of nature. He passed away just before Kurt's black belt exam. Kurt didn't have a mentor or anybody to help him. So my instructor, because Kurt was my close friend, agreed to let Kurt tag along when we did tournaments. In doing that, the amount of knowledge he learned from our team was overwhelming. The amount of knowledge I learned from him was overwhelming. Because I knew how we did it. This is how we always fought. This is what we did. Let me see what you're doing that's different from us. And it worked out great. So. You don't need to be a professional to have an entourage. It's, it's the whole idea of you pulling things together and learning from each other. Plus, <coughs> plus, excuse me. Plus, it's fun to, fun to have people around. Hello from Italy. All right, let's see. I did have a question up here. Others around. Um, ah, here we go. Ed, did you do all these adjustments on one adjustment layer? And, and Edward, yes, the answer is yes. And by the way, Ed, where are you calling in from? Because you look like you have beautiful oceans and a beautiful sky behind you in that picture. So, Ed, let, let us know where you're coming in, calling in from. Yeah, so Ed asked, you know, are all these adjustments on one layer? And the answer is yes. If you notice right here, Here's the, here's the layer we started with. So the very, very first layer I started with, it's right here. So now if I want, I can create a new look. Erica's um, grad. So let's say that's Erica's graduation. And then if I wanted to bring in the entire set of images that we did for that shoot, I'm, just gonna, I'm only going to bring in one more. Um, look, here she is looking at her grandmother. All right, now what I can do is look up Erica's graduation, apply it to this, and there we go. And then from here I can adjust it a little further. It's not refreshing yet. There we go. So before and after. Look at that. So now I have it. Now I have it to where it's um, consistent. So you know I know they're going to use these for announcements. So we want to make sure that each of the images are consistent all the way through. So yes. So that's the benefit of shooting on one layer, or not shooting on one layer, but making all your changes in one layer so you can make the whole thing um, a new look. All right. 
let me come back over here. Oh, <laughs> of course you are. Good. So he, he's in California. Well, the next time we go out there, we're going to look you up. We're going to find you and take you out on a couple of shoots with us, and we'll have a great time. So, well, hey, guys, thank you so much. I really pre appreciate you guys showing up. We have a couple, um, for the next few weeks, we have a couple special guests coming in to visit. And I think I want to call those extended coffee breaks. And we'll, we'll announce them way ahead of time so you'll know who they are and you can get your questions ready for them. So once again, thank you and we'll see you on the next coffee break.